Hi, and welcome to Dr. Mix, Jean-Michel Jarre. You have to know this album. This album is amazing because Jean-Michel Jarre, he's very clever at using synthesizers. He's an incredible melody writer and an orchestration master. Let's go through this album, shall we? Sec, hop. By the way, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, this is the right time to do it. Come on, you can do it. <laughs> yes. Yes. Because there's so many things to unpack right there. Let's clean it a little bit. Voila! Right, I have to start talking because what's happening right here. So the way Jean-Michel Jarre is presenting the first song is by introducing characters. You see, the sounds that he uses are not just random presets. They're not just sounds that come out, ooh, I like it, let's use it. He has concept sounds, all right? So I believe that this first organ that we hear is the eminent, the famous eminent sound, this one. That's the first time I saw one in real life. Now, Jean-Michel Jarre uses this sort of cheaper electronic sort of transistor Hammond organ with a lot of purpose, because this sound keeps on coming back throughout Jean-Michel Jarre's discography. So he gives you the notes, right? And then he completes the melodic series. And then he gives it a rhythm. Now what's beautiful about this is that it, it basically introduces you slowly to, to the theme and gets you a chance to get attached to it. Not only to the sound, but also to the melody. And it goes on and develops it. Check out. And it's very lyrical, very melodic. Of, um, of pads. These are like... Maybe there is a bit of attack there. This is, this is very CS80-like. This is the kind of line that you could hear from Vangelis, right? And he's got these intricate lines that start building the harmonic texture behind it. Ooh, there's another character. I mean, if you know his music, you know that this sort of keeps on coming back. And the thing is that is this sort of growing glissando type type of line, like a like a fill. It's like saying, voila! So apparently Jean-Michel Jarre on this record utilized the 2600, 
the AKS, the VCS3, a Yamaha polyphonic synthesizer, mystery, an Oberheim polyphonic synthesizer, it's probably the Prophet 5, or not, this is 1978, so probably it was the 4 voice or something, the RMI electronic synthesizer and the RMI keyboard computer. Do you know these ones? If you know them, please let me know in the comments. And there you go, LK707, Korg Polyphonic Ensemble, Eminent, the Mellotron, the ARP sequencer, and the Oberheim digital sequencer. So these pads must be the Oberheim, I guess. I would quickly move to the next song that I like. Thunder. These are concept albums that you are meant to play from beginning to end on each side. <laughs> Filters. So it has like two or three things that are quite significant. We have probably two drum machines here, don't we? I think it's two drum machines. One for sure must be this. You know why you recognize it? You hear this? There are two of them. It's it's the Guido from the Korg Mini Pops. This one, well, in, in this case, this is the Univox version, but it's just a label. It was exactly the same drum machine. I want to get this repaired sooner or later, but this is responsible for that super recognizable that you hear also on oxygen. There is also another drum machine that I can hear. <laughs> Notice that there is another sort of crickety like sound, which, which should be another guido, but probably from a different drum machine. Hear that one? But then there is... So you have to imagine that this is 1978, so we didn't have, you know, incredible drum machines. These were the type of drum machines that, that you could get at the time. You know, the Rhythm King, the, the Korg. I wonder how he managed to put this whole thing together. There wasn't MIDI clock and stuff like that, so it must have been quite complicated to, to put all these this sequences together. There is definitely a bass line like that. Gong gong gang gong 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 gang gong 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 gingo is probably mixing like a sequencer. It says that he didn't have Minimog. Sounded a little bit like a Minimog to me. All right, before we get to the sequencer that's coming after this, I would like to underline the classical music reference that is constant on this entire album. In fact, I would argue that all interesting electronic music that was composed at the time by people like Jean-Michel Jarre, Kraftwerk, by Vangelis, they were all based on classical melodies. No, no. 
is so sweet, so simple, so memorable. Good melodies win, <laughs> right? But also, he is quite clever because he likes to play with polyrhythms. What do I mean by that? He's never predictable in his laying down of melodies. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, one, two, three, four. He's all over the place. He keeps it even, but it, it displaces the beginning of each part of the melody. So the, the drums are going like 4-4. Four, four. The melody is resetting pretty much whenever it wants. So you think it's a very simple melody, but it's not. The melody, the number of notes is simple, but the way he lays it down is very complicated and masterful. Here comes the sequencer. What in the world was that? So, so it doesn't start on the on, on the on the downbeat, does it? It starts on the second or second sixteen note. It's not a normal sequencer. There is something that's happening there. I cannot put my fingers on it. Do you know what that is? Was he using this with a sequencer triggering? I have no idea. But it's so cool. That started the downbeat. like a madrigal. What is it? It's like, uh, I don't know, Gregorian music? It actually reminds me of a rumba tune. Uh, sorry, this is my own trip. I'm gonna leave a link to this this track that it reminds me of. But the thing is that this is super classical stuff, which mixes really well with synthesizers. I'm not saying anything. <laughs> Now, if this doesn't remind you of the Kraftwerk, I don't know what does, because the Kraftwerk has... Let me show you what I mean by that. Uh, yeah. There. This is 1978 as well, but something tells me that these guys were all listening to each other. <laughs> I am sure, because you can't really possibly come up with all that language and, you know, incidentally, that sound is the same. That sound. Jean-Michel Jarre puts it front and center in that song. I don't know if it's played, I don't know if it's sequenced, but I love that. Next, in the next section of this track, it goes into some kind of ostinato, which kind of bridges to the next section, because after all, this is progressive music, so you have sections, right? So here it goes dominant.
great part of this is sort of the, the obsessive repetition and the micro changes that happen. So the, the way the, the brain is working on music is that you hear a loop, right? So you, you hear it a second time and then you hear it a third time. The third time that you heard it, it kind of has legitimized in your mind, right? You get used to it like... Uh. Yeah, you heard it like two, three times, now you are into it. Now, if I make a little variation on it... Right? Now you completely get the difference, right? Because you've been listening to the same loop. Now, a, a micro variation, you will notice a lot, right? And this is a little bit the trick behind dance music, electronic dance music, house music, techno music, because these guys wrote the manual, repeating, 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 and then a little variation. So that when you get that variation, now you are pulled back into the song because there is a new element. This stuff did not exist before dance music. These guys wrote the orchestration tricks that work with electronic music and dance music. By the way, if you want me to also analyze oxygen, I think that you should write a comment saying, OXYGEN! Sample this? So obviously the song evolves and in the last part... This may be a Mellotron. French people, you have to let them do. And then there is the... Uh, the ending right, where he, in a very cinematic way, reproposes a variation of the leitmotif. And it's interesting, another thing that's interesting is that this entire side, half of the album is built on a simple motif, like a, you know, melodic seed. I call them melodic seeds because it's like they're a plant, you plant them and they flourish into their own orchestration, as if by magic. And this is something that happens a lot in movies. So the entire Equinox is very cinematic and completely instrumental. And now we got to the track that really stands out in my memory. Where is it? Here. Oh yeah. There you go. Going from one song to the next with a smooth mix. You're so good, Jean-Michel Jarre. He's not afraid to explore a little bit of Africa in this one. And, and the Africa bit is in that clave. This is basically deep Afro house, if you really think about it. I mean, you can, you can hear Black Coffee playing this kind of stuff to crowds of thousands of people. Check that out. It started from... 
from this, from this kind of stuff. Two sounds. It's a sequencer. Or something like that. Or something like that. I sequence her part. And then. Big string like pads doing the melody. There's another thing that he does very much like house music, that it all centers on a very simple chord and a variation of the same chord. simple. It's two chords, A minor and F major over A minor, F major over A, or maybe you can just call it A minor 6. Very long. Tension. Now we're going somewhere else. Minor 9? Well, it's a diminished... Yeah, that chord. And then it breaks into the next thing. Now, I said that he is very good at polyrhythms. Yeah, he's very good at polyrhythms. He really understands the, the subtlety of mixing three against four. Check out the drums, yeah? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, and... This is 16 notes. But what is he playing on top of that? It doesn't care. It's in three on a four four drums. And somehow, with the delay, the way he delivers it, it makes complete sense. If I did it now, probably people would go, ooh, Claude, what the hell have you done? But if you're Jean Michel Jarre, you get away with it. Why? Because you're a genius. We are completely displaced. The idea of using razors. Yeah. I mean, it's not a new thing because usually this is what we used to do it before electronics. Wait. This. Right? And it's the same concept. Basically, that swooshy sound is designed to underline the end of a, of a phrase, of a sentence, of an eight, 
eight bars, 16 bars. Now, noises, thunders, razors. This is kind of the first time that we started hearing that stuff. It became standard in any dance music piece. You hear it everywhere nowadays, but it wasn't so obvious at this stage with these sounds in this context. <laughs> Now you think that you go somewhere else? And it just goes back to minor. And also melodically, this is very, very memorable. Very long tensions, very long chords, but the melody sort of describe an arc that makes sense in your brain, doesn't it? Presentation of the melody. Same melody, different degree of scale, different degree, but I stop. And now I create this big tension. I have come finally to the resolution. It takes great tastes and great instincts to create melodies this good. Yeah. 